The Lord be with you. When I was small, I always thought my mother was omniscient because she knew where everything was. I'd say, Mom, where are my shoes? And she'd say, they're under the bed, just like that. When I looked, sure enough, there they were. As I grew older, I realized she wasn't omniscient. She just saw them on the floor and kicked them under the bed. I suppose it was her way of getting the housework done in a hurry. For a period of time, we were lucky enough to have a housekeeper. She would come in every other week to dust, vacuum, and clean every little out-of-the-way corner of our house. I dreaded cleaning day. Whenever she came, my mom would have all of us kids cleaning the house all morning long for the housekeeper. We didn't want the house to be dirty, or what would the housekeeper think? That same kind of thinking transferred to beauty parlor day. Back then, we didn't have salons and stylists. We had beauty parlors and barber shops. On the day of her appointment, my mom would spend an hour looking into a mirror, fixing her hair. She would then go to the beauty parlor, return home, and look into a mirror for another hour, fussing with it until she got her hair looking just the way she wanted it to look. And every time we got the job of loading the dishwasher, we had to wash the dishes by hand before we put them in the dishwasher. So why did we have a dishwasher at all? Parents can be such strange people, and they sure are hard to raise. Sometimes we act the same way with God. We think we have to hide some things in our lives. We have to get our house in order. We have to get cleaner before we can come to God to get clean. We refuse to come to God as we are. Instead, we decide to wait until we are ready to come to God as we aren't. For whatever reason, we decide that the way we lived yesterday, last week, or last year makes us damaged goods. And until we start living right, we're not good enough to come to God. Some of us, even some of us in the church, actually believe that until we choose the correct way to live, we aren't choosable. That until we clean up the mess that we call our lives, Jesus won't want to have anything to do with us. Every message of the Bible cries out, untrue. Jesus is attracted to the unattractive. Only when we admit how unlovely we are, how unattractive we are, how lost we are, only then can our Lord come into our lives in a full, life-changing way. The New Testament abounds with love. Read it. Jesus prefers the lost ones over the found ones, the losers over the winners, the broken instead of the whole, the messy instead of the instead of the messless, the sinner over those who claim to be sinless. Christian author James Montgomery Boyce so beautifully listed the amazing things Jesus' birth, sinless life, and sacrificial death accomplished for humankind as a sign of God's amazing love for us. Quote, Jesus endured a human birth to give us a new spiritual birth. He occupied a stable that we might occupy a mansion. He had an earthly mother so that we might have a heavenly father. He became subject so that we might be free. He left his glory to give us glory. He became poor so that we might be rich. He was welcomed by shepherds at his birth 
so we through our new birth can one day be welcomed by angels. So keep kicking shoes under the bed, trying to hide what will just become a bigger mess. Keep cleaning the house to make others believe that is how you keep it all the time. Keep fixing your hair before going to the professional who really does know how to fix your hair. But please, please, please don't try to fix your own soul before coming to the professional who really does know how to fix all our souls. The one who loves us best. The one who still says, follow me. Trying to clean ourselves up to be good enough for God is like washing our cars on a rainy day in a mud puddle. It's just not going to accomplish very much. But in God's hands, but in God's care, Amen.